Welcome to You've Got This with Sarah Hamaker, a podcast to encourage and equip moms along their parenting journey. Join Sarah each week as she interviews dads and moms like you and discusses the joys, challenges, and rewards of raising kids. Hi, and welcome to this week's You've Got This. I'm your host, Sarah Hamaker. Today, I answer listener questions about toddlers and preschoolers. If you have a question about your child, please write to me at parentcoachnova at gmail.com. You can also find that email address with this podcast information. Our first question comes from a mom of a 27-month-old daughter. The toddler uh, recently started hitting mom when she said no to her. Sometimes he hits dad as well, but most often it's directed at her mother. In moments of frustration, mom asks, how should I handle this both in the moment and in the long term? That's a great question because nothing is more frustrating, I think, as parents than a toddler or a child who hits us, right? Especially when we're saying no. Sometimes it can be no, don't go in the street because a car is coming by and the toddler is upset. Sometimes it's no, don't touch the stove. Sometimes it's no, you're not going to have that candy before dinner. Sometimes it's no, that could have been a yes, but in the moment it's a no. Um, You know, you can't read that book right now. We've got to eat. Uh, Toddlers, by their very nature, and preschoolers, don't like to be told no. It's part of our human nature. It's part of that sin nature in our hearts that rebel against someone else having authority over us. I think when we have that as our, in the back of our mind, we can better able to answer the toddler's no in the moment. So the toddler has, so that's kind of why the toddler is saying no. Now, what to do about it? My best, um, my guest response is that you need to grab the toddler's hands and tell her no hitting. And then you redirect her. Now, if you know that there are times when she is more likely to hit than others, for example, transitions, and we're going to talk about, I have another question about transitions coming up too, um, then you can kind of prepare her a little bit more. So say she gets really upset when you say put on her coat. You can say, do you want to put on the coat with your left arm or with your right arm? You know, let her make a choice which arm first. You can say, do you want to hop like a bunny when you go brush your teeth or slide your feet like a snake? You can make these kind of choices, which aren't really choices, but they are kind of choices. Do you want to put your socks on first or your pants? I mean, those are the kind of choices you can give in the moment to help kind of reduce that no and give the child a sense of control. That's what they really want. They want to control that. And on those situations where you have to say no and there really is no choice, then you are just going to have to um, kind of prepare them a little bit in advance. So if you know that, you know, like 10 minutes 15 minutes before you're getting ready to leave, you start preparing the child. We're going to have to leave soon. You're going to have to pick up your toys in a few minutes. That kind of thing can really help with that. Our next question comes from a mom of a three-year-old boy who was having trouble in church nursery and Sunday school class. The mom writes that the son does not like to play with kids his age or older. He plays well with older children. Um, the And he yells when our screaming tantrums he yells if someone gets close to his space if takes something he wants um so <clears throat> he does really well at home but is having trouble with his peers at school at, at sunday school and at church she asks is this normal the not wanting to play with children his eggs his age um and yet at home he seems very enthusiastic about it this is a boy who just needs more practice he needs to be shown how to play with kids, um, and he, he needs to just that exposure and practice. So to help the other teachers, again, with those, with those things, help them um, give him jobs to do in the classroom. That can be really helpful. Hey, Jimmy, can you help hand out the, um, the papers for our coloring today? Can you uh, hand every kid two crowns? Can you help with that? 
that can help settle him down if you give him some sort of jobs to do. You can also might just have to um, show him more. Maybe mom can stay in the classroom for 10 or 15 minutes to help him with that. Uh, th th this is simply a kind of a sign of immaturity. So the more that you can kind of prepare him for that, the better for that. Um, another question comes from a listener who has a, is a mom of a 21-year-old daughter who constantly wants to be held when mom is home. And, you know, and she, the mom says, I simply cannot keep it up. If I don't hold her when she wants, she cries and cries, help, what should I do? Also, she's not good at playing by herself when I'm around. Well, I would posit that she's not good at playing by herself while mom is around because mom hasn't given her many opportunities. I suspect that mom would rather not hear her cry. And we don't always want to hear our children cry, but sometimes it can be the best thing for them. So what is this mom to do? Here's my suggestion. Mom can set a timer and say, I'm going to hold you for five minutes. And when the timer goes off, it's time for you to play. And and stick with it. So the girl might fuss. You said well, the timer went off. Now here, play with your blocks and you can set another timer. Play with your blocks for five minutes and then mommy will read you a story. And then you just start training her by little increments. Do this by yourself and then you reward her with time with mom. Um, and that can help her learn to play by herself. It can give mom an arbitrary thing. It's hard to argue with a timer that went off. And I recommend getting not on your phone. Get one of those old-fashioned egg timers. They're a couple bucks at the store at Walmart, Target, those sort of places. And you just sit because it's a very loud noise. And the kids can kind of see the time ticking away. Um, and it's just a little less, uh, it, it's, it's very helpful. My, let me tell you, those timers are your friends. So try that. And I think that that will really help her figure out what, um, you know, how to help her child play by herself. Another mom wants a sample routine for her two-year-old twins. Uh, giving her living situation, playing outside, and other outings are difficult so she wants to know what to do with her, her um, morning, midday, and evening would be useful to her. And I applaud her for asking this question when the kids are toddlers because as she trains them when they get older, they will all be able to live in this space more pleasantly. So in the mornings, here's some things, here are my suggestions. In the mornings, the girls should dress, eat, brush the teeth, and make the bed. That should be part of any child's morning routine. Now, making the bed could simply be making sure all the stuffed animals are on the bed. Um, you can make your have make the bed as formal or informal as you want. You start with the basics, and then I recommend moving on to some sort of physical activity. For small spaces, my go-tos are jumping up and down. They jump, you count. There are plenty of jump, rom jump rope rhyming things that you can say. Uh, dance, freeze, play music, then stop it. Everyone freezes, etc. Start with about 10 or 15 minutes and segue into playtime with a particular type of toy like tr cars, trains, puzzles, baby dolls. Again, set the timer for 10 minutes. You are not to play with them, but to direct them to the next activity. Change is the key in this age group, but you should not be their playmate. Mom can interact with them a little bit, but mom's goal is to help the girls to do things by themselves. Now, if the girls are really playing well with trains, for example, and the timer goes off, for heaven's sakes, you can give them more time at that activity. But often, after about 10 or 15 minutes, this age is ready for something else. Around 10 o'clock in the morning, 10 to 11, depending on when the girls get up, it's snack time. After snack time, chores. Toddlers can wipe baseboards, take out the trash, and mop the kitchen floor with a rag, uh, bathroom floors. My kids loved, loved it. They are want to be helpers, and there are plenty of little nooks and crannies in your house that could use little toddler hands to get the dust out. My baseboards never look so clean as to when um, I had toddlers. Then uh, some quiet reading time with mom before another round of playtime. Lunch at noon, clean up after lunch, then rest time from 1 to 2 or so. If they still take naps, excellent. If not, still have rest times in their room. I am a big fan of rest time. And um, we currently have a four-year-old foster daughter in our home who has no longer takes naps. But when she's here on the weekends, she takes about a 90-minute rest time where she can be by herself, read her books, play in her bed. And it's good for her and it's good for us as well. Everyone needs a break. 
in the afternoons, up and rest snack time. Up and rest snap, um, then it's snack time, a little snack. Um, some more physical activity. Nice weather, take a walk, even around the edges of a parking lot in the afternoons. Traffic's not going to be that heavy. Have a garden-style apartment. Maybe they can run up and down the covered areas for a time, assuming your neighbors are at work. You don't want to be too annoying. More playtime, then they can help you get dinner on by mixing a salad with their clean hands or setting their place at the table. Bedtime should be no later than 7, um, so 6.30 is time to get ready. Change into PJs, bless teeth, go potty, then into bed after a story or two. Again, the key for this age group is directing more than you're playing with your kids. Use a timer if you need to, but otherwise keep encouraging your children to play by themselves. It will be super short, short snippets to begin with because of their short attention spans, but with practice these will get longer and you'll have more time to do what you want when your children entertain themselves. Our next question is about a three-year-old boy who goes to daycare and doesn't want to nap. So the, the mom works, she's fortunate enough to offer, uh, have a place that offers on-site daycare, and they've been, he's been going there since he was one. He doesn't have any issues napping at home, but he recently transitioned to a new classroom, and he seems like he's picked up some bad habits because the teachers rub his back or arm or whatever to get him to sleep during the first few days of the transition, and it's never stopped. Now he can be kind of disruptive and gets up to play while others are sleeping. This leads to a tougher night since he didn't nap and is lacking sleep in general. So she thinks maybe having him go to bed earlier that night and letting me have to go to sleep earlier because he didn't nap, but she's not sure he can relate the two events. Okay, so let's, let's just say, I know it's disappointing when children give up their naps. I have four children, as you know, and... My, I had two of them who I had to stop taking naps before preschool at age four, and the other two gave up their naps shortly after their second birthdays. So I know how frustrating it is when a child doesn't nap and they're so cranky in the evening. However, you cannot make a three-year-old nap. It's not going to happen. He has outgrown his naps. So I would suggest that his teachers at school create a little nook for him, pack it with some books, and give him something to do during his nap. Maybe that can be closer to her desk. And he can sit there and in a little light and look at books quietly. And I would tell him, as long as you're quiet, you don't have to lie down. You can sit up on your little cot or mat and look at these books. That is what they do with my um, my foster daughter because she no longer takes a nap at um, when she's at daycare all day instead of going to her preschool. So you're going to need to do that for the nap. And yes, put him to bed early. He should be going to bed no later than 7 o'clock, 6.30 if he's super tired. This will help him not be so cranky and help you too. Yeah, this means that you might not get to see him that much after, after your work. That's okay. This is temporary. In another three or four months, he'll be able to stay up till 7 o'clock, and then you'll get a little more time. But believe me, don't sacrifice your child's sleep time to have time with you. This will pass. You will have more time with them. These are all temporary things. Our final questions have to do with transitions. <clears throat> One mom's three-year-old cries at the end of a play date like the world is ending. The other mom's three-year-old has trouble transitioning from an activity to another at preschool, crying and protesting for a good 20 minutes after the fact. <clears throat> if you've had kids like this, if you have, you know how embarrassing it is when they cry like the world is ending because they have to leave. Transitions can be very, very hard for kids. Here are some ways we can assist our children to adjusting to change, whether it's a small one like stopping at the store on the way home from preschool or a major one like moving to a new home to help them with these transitions, whether it's leaving a friend or moving from one activity to another at preschool. We live in a fluid world, and sometimes we need to go with the flow, so to speak. A trip to the store takes twice as long as anticipated, and now your child has to miss his favorite TV show. Someone gets sick, so a planned trip to grandma has to be postponed. By expressing that you too are sad about the change in plans can help your child uh, handle it. So here are some um, know how your child handles change. That was the first point. Some kids are more flexible when it comes to change. Others act like if we've done it this way once, it's set in stone. So you know how they handle change because we live in a fluid world. So these two moms, their children don't handle tra transitions very well. So you need to uh, recognize that. Be calm yourself. When we're frazzled, our kids pick up that something 
that on that and sometimes can be as stressed as we are. Try to be calm in those situations. If you know your daughter cries when she leaves play dates, kind of mentally prepare yourself for forehand so that you can be more calm in the moment. Think about what hampers your child from handling transition easily. Are you leaving too close to nap time and or snack time or lunch time? Is the child at preschool, um, has, have, has he had um, a nap or is it close to lunchtime? Are those when he's having more trouble with transitions? Discovering that can maybe help you to bring an extra snack in the car or to give her a snack right before you leave or something like that for the play date. Let them express their feelings. Just you can say to your daughter, for example, if she's upset about leaving the play date, yeah, I, before she leaves, you know, 20 minutes, yeah, I know you're going to be sad when we leave, but we're going to need to go home in about 10 minutes. So I'm just letting you know, it's okay to be sad, but we're, we don't need to cry that much. Don't overschedule yourself or your child. Sometimes we add way too much to our plates, um, and that can contribute to that. And they may be trying to do too much at preschool. Maybe they need more warnings. Give him a 10-minute warning. This allows, allows a child to mentally prepare. So maybe the teachers for the preschool one, maybe the teachers need to warn him, okay, in five minutes, we're going to stop this activity. Um, maybe have him give him jobs to do to help him to kind of make that transition. And maybe he might announce it to the classroom, but sh they may need to go and touch his arm and make sure that he heard them properly. Get yourself ready first. So if you need to get out the door or we need to leave, get your things ready before you call the child so that you can fi focus on the child. Outline steps to take in small ch chunks. Remember, preschoolers and toddlers, give them only one, maybe two verbal steps at a time. For example, don't say, we're going to the library for story time to check out books. You want to get that dinosaur one, right? So you need to get your shoes on, go to the bathroom, and get your coat. Way too long. Instead, say, get your shoes on, go to potty, get your coat on, give them time to accomplish it without doing that. You, again, use a timer. Kids this age love timers. And if you're out, you can use a timer on your phone. You can say, hey, when this goes off, we need to get ready and say our goodbyes. Build in extra time. If you know that your child has trouble with transitions, build in extra time to help with those. One final thought. Watch our tech usage um, because we can sabotage our own transitions by forgetting the time and getting all mixed up in that. So those are my, t my thoughts on helping the transitions with your child. If you have any other thoughts, questions about toddlers or preschools, I'll be doing another podcast soon on that. So please send me your email. And if you enjoy this podcast, if you enjoy my podcast, please uh, leave me a, a review. It helps others to find it. You've been listening to You've Got This. I'm your host, Sarah Hamaker. And today we talked about, is it normal? The toddlers and preschool edition. I hope you join me next week. Thanks for listening to this week's podcast of You've Got This with Sarah Hamaker. Sign up to receive notification of new podcasts and listen to previous editions at sarahhammaker.com. Until next time, remember, parenting might be hard sometimes, but don't worry, you've got this.